I want to talk to you about setting up a bandsaw. You are either on the verge of just buying one, you've got one that you've not used for a long time, inherited a vintage one, whatever you bought, whatever you're about to acquire, this is just to help you through that. In addition to the manual that came with your machine or what you Googled for in terms of setting up that particular bandsaw, because bandsaws are all different. And what I'm going to do is walk you through it and you'll start to see how the comparison between one bandsaw and another is actually going to be very similar. Just small um, parts to the bandsaw that may be slightly different, but what you need to do is you need to know how to adjust it, how to prepare it for use, how to initialize it if you've just got one. Uh, and I'm gonna walk you through that because I think I can help you. I think the best way to show you how to set up your bandsaw is for me to take the blade out of my bandsaw and install another one because most of the operations you do to install the blade are what I do generally after I've installed it. I have to check my tension, I check my bearing alignments, I check my, everything that I have to do. I want to make sure that the blade is the is in alignment with the, the table, that the bearings are exactly where they need to be. I've got three bearings in the top, three bearings in the bottom, that kind of thing. I want to make sure all of those are aligned. So generally, I do that every time I install a blade. So walking you through that will help you understand what it takes to tension, to install, to align the different mechanisms that make the bandsaw work well. First, I'm going to go inside. I want to take a look in. I want you to see in here, inside my doors. I have a tensioner here. This tensions the blade, but some machines, the more modern ones, may have a pre-tensioner on the back, which I do have. So I'm going to loosen that first. That drops the top wheel down. And that's loosened my blade, so I can actually remove the blade from here without turning anything else. So I can take more pressure off this if I need to, but generally I don't need to because the blade will just plop out like this. And remember this is a bit like wrestling with a cobra because you've got a million teeth in there. So when you're handling this, take care. So there's my blade out. As soon as you get it out, go ahead and fold this. And this is where we cross the, our arms. This blade's now defunct. It's no longer usable. So I take this one, get rid of it, hang it up, and recycle the metal. I've got a brand new blade here. This is a very tooth and it's a half inch blade and I just took out a 3 8 blade. So I will need to reset my bearings and uh, be careful unwrapping these. When they're brand new, they are very, very sharp. So unwrapping it, just feel for how the coils are and unwrap it as best you can. Sometimes the blade can be inside out. So like that, the blade is now inside out. If I install that, the blade, the teeth would be going against the cut. So I turn it around, just twist it. I've got a half inch blade. The one that was in was three eighths. And the thickness, the width of the blade, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, will affect the attention that you put onto the blade because the, the, the wider the blade, the more tension it needs. And sometimes smaller bandsaws don't have enough strength in their adjustment to put pressure, the sufficient pr pr pressure on there. So now I'm getting this as near as I can aligned with the wheels. I've got to get it in between bearings above and below and I have to get it into, onto the two wheels. So sometimes it just slops right on there, it just goes straight into place, and other times you find yourself fiddling for a few minutes to get it in line. 
and it's catching because it's loose. Now you have a bandsaw, when you order your bandsaw blade, or the bandsaw blade that came with it, will be the right size and you have to order a specific size. You can't really order a variable sized blade that will fit your particular bandsaw, so you have to know what size to order. And that will be according to the wheels. I'm putting this little spacer in here that catches the dust, sends it down the chute. Now I'm gonna, I've got this centered on the top wheel as near as I can, centered on the bottom wheel, a line there, so I can apply the tension with the tensioner, the pretensioner again, by pulling the lever. But that's not enough for the final tensioning, usually. And the tension will vary because if the manufacturer makes the blade slightly longer or slightly shorter by a little increment, then it will affect the tension you've got on the blade. So I'm going to put this here. Now I'm looking inside here. What I'm going to do is just turn the wheel a few revolutions to see how the blade is lining up with the bearing. Now it's hitting the back bearing. There's a bearing under here that stops the blade from going too far back. So that's just catching on there, and I don't want that bearing to be rotating. I want it to kiss that bearing when I'm operating the machine and driving the wood into it. But I am centered on this wheel, so I feel happy about that. I'm towards the front of the bottom wheel, which means I may need to send it back. So what I do to send it backwards, I have to turn this knob here Loosen this lock wheel, this lock nut here, and then we adjust this. And what we have to do is we kind of rotate at the same time. So if I go counterclockwise, that's going to send the blade to the back of the wheel. I want to send it to the back, so I'm going counterclockwise. Just a couple of turns. And this can vary for a variety of different reasons. Keep going. Now I'm going to slacken the tension again and move it back manually because it's not moving as I want it to move. I'm going to push it back onto the center like this and on the bottom and then tension it again. So I'm going to turn this knob here, and I may have said it wrong because I think I may have said it the wrong way around. If I turn it clockwise, it sends the blade back to the back of the top wheel, and that will align it with the bottom wheel as well. So I'm going to give it a couple of turns and then start spinning. And I can see it going back to where I want it. So I want it more centered on the top wheel which then will align it more on the bottom wheel, which it has done. So I'm going to go one more half turn there. And now I'm centered on the top wheel. I feel perfectly happy with that. And it's not moved all the way back on the bottom wheel, but it's back enough for me to be satisfied that it's aligning the right way. So shut this off, close this up. And at this stage, I might run this machine just for a few seconds and let that blade self-align as it works on its passage on there because it's under this compression, it's got tension. But what I want you to see is how much tension do I have on this blade? I've got quite a lot of tension and uh, tension is very important. So what I'm doing is I'm putting this block here and I'm going to pull here roughly between the top and bottom, so that would be around here. I pull this to see how much the block's moved. And I've got about a quarter of an inch, so I think I'm right on my tension, but I have a half inch blade in here. Let's take a quick look at the tension here. This tension tells me that I'm on the correct tension for a blade that's one and one eighth of an inch wide instead of half an inch which would technically mean I've got too much tension on it, but I know that this blade 
has the right amount of tension by my experience and that it's very difficult to get the exact tension using a tensioner guide. So be prepared to alter the tension according to what you ultimately will experience as you get used to the bandsaw, the different blades, you'll be able to change those uh, tensions as you work with your bandsaw. So that's basically my tension is good. If I wanted to adjust the tension, and drop this down, I can take the tension off here. That's just taking the tension. And this is where the guide is good because now I can see that it has altered the amount of tension that I've got on the blade by simply rotating here. So now this will flex a lot more than it did before. So I'm taking the tension back up to where I think it's about right. And I may alter that again later, but I've got this where the gap between the blade and the block is about a quarter of an inch, and that's what I wanted for this particular tension. So I think everything is ready for a quick trial run. So I'm going to switch the bandsaw on and see how the blade tracks, because that's the most important thing. I've got to adjust the bearings on here, but these two side bearings are behind the teeth right now. I may have to adjust those in a minute because they, I think they're too far back, so I'm going to bring them forward. So once I've got the blade tracked and I've got the bearings, I'm ready to adjust the bearings. The bearings uh, are important, the tracking is important, the tension is important because that affects everything that this bandsaw will do. Now that I've had the blade spinning on its own motor for a while, I know it had the momentum up there. I wanted that to happen so it can align itself, bed itself in, whatever it needed to do. But what I did notice is the back thrust bearing that comes directly behind the blade is actually catching on the blade. That's because I installed a, a wider blade. I went from 3 eighths to a half inch. So it's been tracking it onto the center of the top blade, uh, top wheel meant it was pulling back. So I've got to make some minor adjustment on there. But first of all, remember, unplug. You've got to unplug your machine every time for your own safety. And, you know, it, it's just important. It's just so important to be safe while you're working. Now I'm happy to do that. Now I'm going to adjust the bearing. Getting in there. I'm going to rely on the uh, pressure, the tension on the actual bearing by the blade itself. So get my wrench in there, my Allen key. As soon as I do this, that, that bearing shot back. It moved itself back because of the tension from the blade. So now it's just off. What I'm going to do is reinsert my Allen key in there and just bring that blade. So I've taken it all the way back so you can see. I've got it all the way back. Now I'm nudging it forward. It's just kissing the back of the blade. I'm going to take it a hair off the blade there. Now it's locked on. So when I spin, I'm going to open the top door and just turn this. And I'm looking at the bearing and the bearing is not turning, but I can see just the slightest gap in there, which is exactly what I want. So my top bearing is now fully adjusted. I have to do the same to the bottom bearing. I'm going to cinch this off here. Get it nice and tight. And then I adjust the bottom one, which is exactly the same. So what I'm going to do now is I'm looking at my side bearings here because these need adjusting too. Inevitably, whenever you make any kind of change on your bandsaw blade, it's going to require some adjusting here. So I'm adjusting this. It's not catching the teeth. So I move this from an outward position till it just nudges against the side of the blade with a hairline gap in there. Same with this one. And these stop the blade from wandering from side to side. So again, I'm relying on 
the tension on the blade to allow me to align this where it needs to align on the side of the blade. So this thing with the tension is very important. So there, I think I have it. I'm gonna open up the top, still disconnected. So I'm opening the top and I'm just seeing my left hand bearing is just moving with the rotation. So I'm gonna adjust it till it's not moving. That's it. So I've got those two side bearings done. Once I've done those, I'm gonna do the bottom ones. When I do the bottom ones, that can affect the top one. So I may go in and out between the top and the bottom until I'm sure I've got everything aligned properly according to the tension. So right inside under here, I've got the same. Now these two side bearings seem to be just fine. I'm going to rotate my top wheel to see how it relates to that bottom, at the back thrust bearing. Now the back thrust bearing is rotating, which means it's on that back bearing. So I'm going to loosen this and let that back bearing move back. It's automatically going to spring back, so it did. A little rotation. It is just barely touching it, but I think I'm gonna take it back. A paper thickness, really, is all I'm taking it back. Oops, too much. Still too much, just a nudge. That's it. So I've got my top and bottom bearings. I'm gonna just make sure everything is tight before I close off. And if once that's tightened, I am perfectly happy. I've got everything aligned there. The next thing is going to be to see how my table aligns with the blade itself in two directions. Close everything off. This next one, I'm going to lift the blade, the, uh, the stem guard out of the way because where I'm going next is I want to align this blade with a square. So I want to check myself for being square. Now in this case, I think this is going to go up enough. So this would be the, no, it won't go. So I'm gonna drop down a little bit. And I'm checking the blade with the table here. And because I was previously set up, it's dead square. If it's not, you have an adjustment right in here that the table sits on and you can micro adjust that table by turning a wrench on that and that will lift the blade, uh, the table or lower it down. So I'm perfectly happy I'm square this way. The next place to check the square is going to be along the back of the blade or the front of the blade. So I bring my square in from the, lung, the table into here and again, I've got, I've got this square, so it's square. So that means I'm ready and set up. If I want to do tenoning or whatever, I've got that ready. One thing left now is the fence itself. What I want is my fence to be square to the table. This can be tricky on this particular bandsaw. Some bandsaw, they're all different. On this one, I'm checking here to see if I'm square, which I am because I had it previously set up. What to do if it's not square on this bandsaw? These two stems that come out of the, the table here are how you actually square this in this direction, the vertical direction, by slackening one and tightening the other, vice versa. You can raise and lower this bar and that gives you the ability to check this from top to bottom to make sure it's dead square. Uh, so this is, that's what you would have to do with that one. 
As far as square across the table, I have checked my table and my table here is square to this axis. So I can take my square on this front axis here. I can run this up to the blade, move it to a position and I can check it for square. Now it's showing that I am square. If it's not square on this particular one, let me move this here. I can, I can adjust this by slackening. I can change this. So let me do a major shift on this so you can see it. So there you can see I'm way out of square. On this one, I can turn this till I'm dead square, which I have perfect alignment now. Then I turn this one and lock it down onto the main stem and then micro adjust it. Now I'm dead square, so I'm square this way, square this way. My blade is square to my work. I'm ready to try this. One thing with this particular bandsaw in this fence is that once you come in here, you can't lower this down sufficient for safety because of this. Technically, you're supposed to take this off and move it to its side. So we slacken off here, slide it out of its holder and move it to a side position. The unfortunate part in that is that you have reduced the width of your stock to this. So you can't get a wider piece in there, but this will enable you to lower your fence down to a safe distance between the top and the bottom bearing and all the top bearings and the table. So now you can rip your thin stock, your narrow stock, whatever. But what I've done is I took it a little notch further from my own. Um, and this is, part, this is partly the reason I did that because I found this difficult a lot of the time. It didn't move as quickly as I wanted it to. So what I did is I got this aligned here. Check myself for square. Get this locked off. Make sure everything is locked off. I'm out of square, so I'm going to micro adjust till I'm square. There. Locked off. And what I did is I brought in another auxiliary fence that I liked. So what I've done is I've put a square stop on here and I've got a little piece of metal that I fold in here and that slides into the end of the existing fence like that. And now I can move this all the way underneath this uh, bearing area here without a problem and I can rip whatever I want, bring this down to a perfectly safe height to work and it works fine. So that's my bandsaw, my basic setup, my practice. This is what I do in the everyday of life. Every time I change a blade, I do that to my bandsaw. This is functional and now it's working. I'm going to try it with a piece of wood. I'm going to listen. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to watch things for the first few minutes to make sure everything stays in place. That's what I would do when I'm setting up my bandsaw. I think that's what's going to help you the most.